So I just happen to be here at IBM, so I can show you this, their new AIU, their Artificial Intelligence Unit. It's a PCI card with a custom SOC on with their third generation AI architecture. Now on this channel, you've seen me talk about their new Telem or Z16 system that has AI built into it. Well, the core that's in that chip, they've put 32 of them in here into a 75 watt form factor that's gonna go in their cloud first, but co uh, consumers are gonna be able to use it for training and inference. Now, one of the funky things here is this is designed go to go down to a quantization level of int two, because they're doing lots of research here about using those reduced precision quantization levels for AI inference. This is what the card looks like. This is a prototype, right? This is, may not be what it looks like at the end. You got a nice big blue heat sink. Uh, it's air cooled. You put these in the server, kind of like you would do with a T4 or an A10. You know, uh, normally on the back, it's half height, half length. But if I put this down and show you this, this is kind of what the chip looks like. We've got a centralized SOC. We've got a PCA4 by 16 link, and then eight LPDDR4-5 modules. We're gonna go over some of the specs when I get home. Ooh. Well, that was uh, somewhat of a long trip. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to film much of uh, the IBM stuff at the event, uh, kind of noisy at the Think Lab, because it's a very busy and bustling place. However, I was able to get some slides to go through with you about this new artificial intelligence unit. And it looks a bit like this. And we have the simply just the AI hardware forum. This is the event where they announced it. I actually did a presentation during that event. I'm still waiting to get the go ahead to post that video. But it was all about the AI cores and architectures. And here we see that, you know, this is just part of the chip, but we'll get to where, what the chip looks like properly. Uh, IBM Research aims to advance AI across a full stack. And I've got some quotes uh, from, from uh, IBM Research SVPs uh, to go through that. But what we're really here for is just the full chip, a, the artificial intelligence unit. And to set, to set it up here, right, so... We've been through some of the Z16 uh, hardware before here on this channel. And the Z16, the Telem chip, is an 8-core processor, 32 megs of L2 cache per core. That's, you know, 256 megs of L2 cache per chip. But the important thing here is the AI accelerator here in the bottom left corner, the little bit in blue. That AI accelerator on that chip is designed for financial transaction processing. The idea is that when you have a financial transaction that comes into the chip, it can be passed through a neural network, um, machine learning network, such that it can do fraud detection in a millisecond per transaction. This is why when you have the big mainframes, they can process billions of transactions per second. And this is kind of what it's aimed to do here in this chip. Now, the Telem chip features, well, it features eight regular cores that can all access this AI accelerator. The AI accelerator units, the card itself, has 32 of those cores. And again, as it says here, focused on low latency inference. So a little bit of background here. One of the pillars of uh, IBM's research portfolio, of which they have four pillars. I've got that in a separate video. One of them is reduced precision computing, either digital or analog. In this case, digital. But the point here is that if we look at all these papers listed here at the bottom, IBM has consistently year over year gone and tried to implement training and inference in reduced precision. The idea is that if you use fewer bits, then you can make that training or inference step at a much lower power. And the idea here is to maintain the same level of accuracy at each, each stage. So we're trending towards, you know, 8-bit, 4-bit, 2-bit training, 4-bit, 2-bit, maybe 1-bit inference in the future. And the point here is that this chip is going to be using some of those digital-based reduced precision formats. And this is the AIU, the Artificial Intelligence Unit. Um, that's Dr. Makesh Kare at the bottom. And this is what it looks like uh, underneath that heatsink. You've got a half-height, half half-length PCIe card using a full PCIe 416 um, link with uh, LPDDR memory. 
And the idea here is that it's built into IBM's Red Stack, um, so Red Hat software stack with integration into IBM Watson. The focus of the chip is going to be an inference, though it can do training. Inference, as uh, Mukesh will say in a second, from FP16 all the way down to INT2. So there are actually instructions on this chip to enable uh, two-bit integer inference. <laughs> My question was, why not one-bit integer inference? Because that's just binary, right? And uh, they said they're still doing the research on that. Oh, wonderful. That's a great question. We are very excited about this uh, announcement today. It's the first time we are announcing a full SOC in a PCIe attached card uh, so that it can be you know, used for any purpose, basically. The idea, the, the initial focus that we have is for inference. So we are going towards the low precision compute all the way from FP16 to INT2. All of that is available on the same card uh, as well as going focusing on the inference workload. That's where we are going. We are accelerating deep learning. That's the general purpose workload that we are going after. And now the application, we have many applications both inside IBM through our own business, through our Watson business, through our financial services business, through our broadly speaking regulated industry business. And we are now converting those uh, stacks to be able to run on this uh, uh, IBM research AIU or artificial intelligence unit uh, chip that we announced today. The key thing to note here is that it's built on five nanometer technology, we assume. So um, some of the numbers that we're gonna go through here are based on a seven nanometer design. Um, we're going to get the speeds and feeds at a later date, but this is just IBM saying, look, we're in the process of uh, developing this chip. We've done first tape outs and they just wanted to announce it to the world. And yeah, here's another picture of Mukesh holding in one hand the blue with a heat sink, which is the prototype, and the other one, which is uh, the card build out. And here's a picture of the card, uh, of the card without the heat sink. As you can see, it's taped down. Uh, but this is the overhead shot. Um, they've scrubbed some of the numbers off some of the silicon here just because this is a prototype. But the whole point here is that the card with, with this can go up to 75 watts, lots of memory, and it can do your inference. Same with uh, what would be, say, an NVIDIA T4 or an A10. Now, let's put this into perspective with the Z16 again. So you've got this single C16 core on the left-hand side. Um, so that's single AIU core. Moving out into the 2022, the IBM Research AIU chip, which has 32 of these AIU cores. And looking into um, a mock-up of a diagram, this is what it looks like internally, where each of the single cores has two sets of compute logic, shared memory, lots of LPDDR interfaces, a PCI interface, and Exactly how it computes at the lower level. This doesn't seem to be, say, a systolic array. It could be CGRA. It could be, it could be something uh, a bit more, say, Grok-like uh, with the data flow uh, accelerator. We're going to get some of that more detail as it comes later. Though this is this is a good mock-up diagram to to show that the core built on five nanometer technology. And here are some of the here are some of the um, benchmark numbers that we were given. Uh, for the AIU, um, focusing on the left-hand side first, you'll see it says FP16, FP8, INT8, INT4, INT2, with a single AIU core at 1.5 gigahertz at 7 LPP. So this isn't the 5 nanometer for the chip. This is just based on a 7 nanometer design, and you can see it just goes in terms of teraflops and teraops, um, all the way down to 48 tops at INT2, and they're claiming you know, a power efficiency of above 40 tops per watt. Uh, for that. And on the right hand side, we've got some of the model accuracy. This is comparing FP32, which is a standard precision um, for these models. That's 32 bits of floating point accuracy. They're comparing against HFP8, which is like a hybrid floating point 8 bit format. Um, isn't mentioned on the left hand side where we've got FP8 and whether this is a true FP8 or a HFP8. The idea is that when you have uh, bits for the exponent and the mantissa, you can vary depending on what. Um, range of accuracy you need and it's showing here that uh, with very common models like AlexNet and ResNet 50 and Transformers you can get comparable accuracy with this HFP8 format rather than FP32. 
and the software stack they're currently supporting tensorflow with work on pytorch uh it's going to be integrated into um their ibm hybrid cloud and you can be able to use it that way and in actual fact here is where i'll let um ibm's mukesh kare uh take over and explain what the use is for this aiu well the of course we can use it for internal customers but our approach is very open so that's why we have developed this card as a PCIe attached card. So any, any computer in the world has a PCIe attachment, any computer, right? So you can use it uh, in, uh, in on-prem infrastructure uh, or even in other cloud, wherever there is a PCIe card is available, as well as, uh, as a part of our ecosystem. Some of our partners are using the same core into their product. We have partnerships with... Uh, uh, some of the startups who are using this, uh, this core technology into their product when they are differentiating uh, in the space that they want to ex uh, you know, develop uh, a better AI capability. So both you know, general purpose attached through PCIe card as well as uh, uh, cores are available to be integrated into others' products as well. So to wrap it all together, why am I spending so much time speaking about this card? It's important to realize that when we speak about AI hardware in the market, there are lots from the established players, the Intels, the NVIDIAs, even the AMDs and the Qualcomms, and there are some up and coming um, built up through the cloud. And then there are also tons of startups, people like the Cerebruses, the Graph Cores, the Groks, um, who are building optimized chips for their customers. Now, to put, it into put that into perspective, I keep saying perspective, uh, the IBM AI Hardware Center has had $2 billion of funding put into it, maybe more um, with the integration of, of, of the state and university. And this is their first you know, kind of proper dedicated AI hardware chip to come out of that. The reason why it's taken, quote unquote, so long from 2019 to get hardware out today is because that $2 billion isn't purely focused on this AIU. There are pillars towards uh, end user test beds and analog processing. We'll go into that into in another video. However, I kind of wanted to lay the land, as it were, of where some of these AI uh, chips are coming up. And that's going to be a focus on this channel going forward uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, and I've got some interesting projects coming up. But this is IBM's uh, uh, artificial intelligence unit coming out soon. More details next year.